Hey there old YouTube friends. This video, we're gonna install the head back on the motor. And then we're gonna put the recoil starter back on, work on the wiring, get it finished up. And then we're gonna work on putting a water pump in it. That's gonna be in a different video. All right, well let's get started and let's get this little Yamaha 30 finished up. on the flywheel and the way we check that is with a dial indicator so what we do is that shows top dead center this indicator right here has a screw and is adjustable it has a slide on it and it's very important we get this set at top dead center so we're going to rotate this motor we'll watch this dial indicator so that's before top dead center See our marks are off now. And then we're gonna go back clockwise. Then when this thing stops, okay, so it went past top dead center there. Let's go back. And our needle has stopped moving. Okay. And we should be right on top dead center according to our mark. And it is. So our indicator is correct. It is very important that we set this first at top dead center. Because otherwise, if we don't have it set, anything past the timing point of this will be thrown off. That's the whole reason we use a dial indicator. Was to find top dead center to true it up. Okay, I'm going to rotate the flywheel again. Alright, see how it goes back. We went past top dead center. Let's back up a little bit. So it zeroes right there. Okay. All right, let's see here. And we are lined up. So the next thing we do is we're gonna advance the magneto to the wide open position. But before we do that, we need to roll the motor over 25 degrees. Okay, and Right there will be 25 degrees after top dead center. Then there's some timing marks we need to look at up here. And we need to have a mark. My light doesn't, there's a mark right here, right there. And then there's a mark on the magneto right here. At fully advanced, those should line up together. When I may say fully advanced, it should be wide open. Okay, carburetors are wide open. And if we look, our timing marks line right up with each other at full advanced. Okay, that is important that that's there. Now, the next thing for idle is we're gonna roll the motor back to five degrees before top dead center, which will probably be about right there. And we're gonna go to full idle. And then our, our magneto arm should be lined up again with our marks. And they are. So that means our ignition, our magneto is dead on for full throttle and at idle. And that is how you set the timing on these little motors not a whole lot to it but it's important that it's done that way so if your hash marks here don't line up when you're at idle there are adjustments you can make on your magneto arm take this screw unloosen the jam bolt back him off and then use your magneto cable make adjustments here and here in order to move your magneto assembly in either direction you need to go. Also, if you need to make large movements, you can take this gem nut, pop this connector, and turn him counterclockwise or clockwise, however you need to make adjustments to bring him into timing. 
those were the three areas you can make the adjustments. You can make adjustment with your cable, your jam nut assembly. Once you get everything set, run him all the way in until he bottoms out against your magneto bar. Don't go pushing on it just when it gets to the when he bottoms out, that's it. And your timing and everything should be back tight where it should be. So we're at full idle. And let's go back to wide open. Okay. And we should go back to 25 degrees on our flywheel. Okay, let's roll back. It's right about there. Right on 25. And our lines should match up. And they do. So that means our magneto adjustment and travel assembly is completely adjusted according that it should be between idle and wide open. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the head on. We're gonna put the cylinder head and the outer water jacket cover. Okay, so I've got the head all cleaned up. I've got new gaskets. The head has been checked for one thousandth clearance warpage and it was good. All the water jacket areas have been cleaned. And the thing we're gonna do before we put the head gasket on and the head assembly is we're gonna to wipe down the faces of the cylinders here. There's a little bit of pre-assembly oil on here. And that's from, you know, when we put the pistons in the cylinders to keep the rust out. We're gonna make sure this is clean and dry. There's no oil, no contaminants. That looks really good. So what I like to do is I like to stack the head. What I do is make sure Put the head gasket on. Make sure when you put your head gasket that you look at it. Make sure there's no trash around the ceiling and ring areas right here. You know, any little bit of trash can cause a uh, head leak and loss of compression. So we'll put him down and then we're going to flip him over. Okay. Line him back up. And make sure you put your head temperature, water temperature gauge uh, sensor back in. And we'll put our outer jacket, outer water jacket cover on. You gotta make sure all the areas are clean for him. Same thing for here, make sure he's clean. All right. And then what I do is I take two head bolts. And I like to run them through the middle and uh, that will align just like that and I'll take this whole assembly and I'll put it on the head of the motor and uh, keeping the two bolts in here will keep your gaskets aligned for you so when you put it on the block your gaskets won't drop and fall out of the place all right now that we got our head put together we're gonna go ahead and set it on the engine block our surfaces are all clean. One thing to remember, before you put your head on, make sure you have your bottom two head bolts in the cylinder, I mean in the head assembly itself, because if you don't, you won't be able to get the bolt in here long enough. They're too long to make the turn to fit in here. So you gotta put them in the head first and then put the head on. Like right here, I have them already installed. If you look down here, you have no room. You have no room at all to get these bolts out. So it's better that you put them in first and then you can tighten them up once the head is installed. Now I'm gonna run these up with my uh, electric impact. I'm, my electric. I'm not gonna tighten them all the way down because they're gonna torque to 20 foot pounds of torque.
Now I've already made the first pass on these bolts with the 10 foot pounds. And if you look, there's numbers as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's the way you go through and torque these bolts. All right, so I got my torque wrench set at 20 foot pounds of torque. We'll start on number one. There's 10 and a half. There's 20 foot pounds of torque. Twenty foot pounds of torque. Now I'm not gonna bore you and go through all these and show you this whole procedure. The way I'm doing on the bottom bolts down here is I use a crow's foot. It'll fit in here, okay? And you can put it on your torque wrench, put them in place. You can torque them over like that on your bottom too with a crow's foot. And that's the reason you can't get a socket in there so you use a crow's foot. All right guys, so now I'm gonna finish torquing the heads out, head bolts out. Then we're gonna put the coil pack assemblies on, the ignition, and that's going to pretty much be it on this motor. We'll put our ring, our uh, cover back over. And then we're going to put the fuel to it and see how she runs. But before we do that, we're going to change the water pump. We're not sure about the water pump. We're going to change it out. And then we're going to run this motor and see how she does. Like and subscribe. Hit that like button. Subscribe, please. It really helps us out on making these videos. And I uh, hope you enjoyed them. We hope you're learning something from them. Please comment. I will reply to your comments. Thank you very much.